Hello, this video is about how to use Google Tour Builder. Um, Google Tour Builder, if you're not familiar, is an awesome tool that combines images and videos, text and maps into one format that allows you to tell your story. Um, so let's get into how to create a Google Tour. To start with, you're going to want to go to tourbuilder.withgoogle.com, log into your uh, Gmail account, and then go ahead and click on create a tour. First thing it's going to ask you to do is name your tour. I'm going to call it My Amazing Tour. And then the author's name. You can leave this blank if you want. It's up to you. Write my name there. Um, and then something to remember before you do anything is that your tour is completely private until you decide to share it with others. Uh, this is really cool because it allows you to kind of piece it together before it goes public um, and doesn't put that stress and pressure on you that's like, ah, oh, I got to get it all done right now. When you're ready though to create your tour, go ahead and click Create Tour. That's going to take us to the editing screen. On the editing screen we have three portions. Uh, I refer to this as the timeline. The portion right here is the editing plane. And then over here we're going to have a map. So let's start with the editor. From here you can rename your tour or your author's name if you need to. Uh, you start by selecting an introduction picture. This is where I like to teach my students about good use of visuals, I tell them to find a photo that summarizes the main idea of your entire tour. You now can come down here to the part that says tell the story. The kids can write a summary of the tour. Again, a summary, not the entire thing. Um, and then you have the options here to edit the text as well. After you've done that and you're ready to add your first location, you go over to this blue button that says add location and add location. It'll pull up a search bar here. I'm going to search for my school, for Corona Charter School. And when you click on that, you'll see the map start to move and the map will go and find my location on there. From there, I can zoom in if I want to get really close. And I can either go ahead and add their place mark here where the A is, or if I want to get more specific and place it directly on my office, I click drop place mark and then my desk is about right there. After I added the custom location I go ahead and hit add to tour and now it brings up some more options. From here this is where you start to tell the story. I can add videos you have an option of up to 25 total and in the adding videos there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can go to your albums, your YouTube, you can upload photos and videos can take a snapshot you can actually search both for images and YouTube or if you have a URL you can go ahead and insert it that way when you're done you just simply would click select and your images would show up here if you do choose more than one image it will turn into a slideshow of images that the kids can click through the next parts the start date and end date really good when you're doing anything revolving around history um, I've seen people do these about famous wars in the American Revolution and they use the start date for when the war started and the end date for when it ended. Uh, if you don't have a start date or end date, that's fine. You can go ahead and leave it blank. Then we get to the introductions. This is where the writing comes in. This is where I would tell the students to write about why this location is important, why are you including it into your tour, um, and any other pertinent information they feel that they need to know about the location. You can, if you want, change the icon. So if you don't want the little red icon here, I can use the blue one. Um, there's some advanced options down here. Really don't use them, but if you have anything that's a KML or KMZ file, you can go ahead and add that. And that's pretty much it. From there, you're just adding new locations. So we'll go to White House. White House Pizza Cafe, let's go there. And you can see the map goes out and then zooms back in. And the really cool part is when you do this with your kids, the map will do that as they click on the next location, which really helps build that contextual knowledge of where locations are on a map. So again, add to tour. Now you'll see the yellow line, which has created a path in between the two locations. And I can go through and edit this again. Last thing I want to show on the editor is if I click back on new location here, you'll see that the map goes out and there's this yellow line. That again creates the path for students. So they see the direction that they're heading in the map, which really helps them visualize what's going on. When you're all done, you've created your amazing tour. You go ahead and click done editing. 
and you're ready to go. When you're ready to share, you can go ahead and click the share button and then you have the same options that you would like a Google Doc. You can share via email, on social media or Gmail, and then you have the same visibility options, private or anyone who has the link. One cool thing to keep in mind is that if you teach younger grades and you don't really want to have them create a tour from scratch, they can actually remix your tours by copying it. So if you go in and you set the locations and you tell them, hey, I want you to fill in the information, they can do that too. If you have the upper grades and you just want them to create the tour from scratch, really easy to use. Um, one of my students a few years ago used it, gave him no prompting at all, and he was able to figure it out. So that's Google Tour Builder. If you have any questions about it, that's my email right there. Feel free to email me and I'd love to help you out. Thanks.